if you ask. Let us read that verse. John chapter 4 verse 10 through 14. Even though that is what we are supposed to be doing today. But let's just uh, go through it. And John. John 4, verse 11, verse 10. It says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. You know, I, um, um, I, I was asking myself, if this person is asking for a drink, is asking for water to drink, and still is telling this woman that if you knew who asked you for a drink, you would, you would have asked of him. Hmm? You would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. So how do you ask? Like I'm asking Mami Diane here. I'm asking Mami Diane. Give me a drink. I'm thirsty. And Mami Diane again asked me, give me a drink. <laughs> is that possible? And this is what Jesus, Jesus is saying. If you knew. This person that is asking for a drink from you, you will have asked for a, for, 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 you will have asked and this person will have given you living water. And so he's just talking about the, the understanding, having the knowledge, letting, having your eyes opened, seeing this person that is asking of this drink, sing beyond this person. Because I think this was just an opening, uh, it was just a way of Jesus starting a conversation with this woman. But Jesus expected this woman to see beyond, to see Jesus beyond just this person who is asking for a drink. But because she did not see, her eyes were not open to see Jesus. So Jesus goes ahead and, introduced, and introduces himself as the living one. I say, if you knew the one who is asking a drink from you, you would have asked. So that this person asking for a drink can give you <laughs> the living water. Amen. So does this mean, why was Jesus asking for, for water to drink? Yet he is the living water. Why was he asking for the water to drink if yet he is the living water? Lovely, let's get the microphone, please. Amen. So Jesus describes himself as living water. And if you knew, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him and have would. He will have given thee living water. Then the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence there hast thou that living water. And twelve said, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, 
which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and, and his cattle. So, this woman is asking Jesus, is Jesus greater than Jacob who provided the well for all his children to drink from this well and even the, his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, the water in the well. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give, I shall give him, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. So Jesus says, the water that he gives, it will not only quench your thirst, but it will be a, a, a spring. It will be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It's okay. Just go. Yeah. So, the water will not only quench the thirst, but will be a well that springs. up into everlasting life. Amen. And so we saw John chapter 6, verse 32 through 35. It talks about the bread, Jesus being the bread of life. The bread of life. Jesus told the, uh, told the disciples, he says, Moses gave you the bread did not give you the bread from heaven. Because I think they were telling Moses, Moses, they were telling Jesus, Moses gave us bread from heaven. But Jesus told them, no. Moses did not give you bread from heaven. The bread that God giveth is the bread that comes from heaven. But the bread that Moses gave you was not the bread from heaven. Let us read that um, John six thirty two. Uh, verse, starting from verse 1, it says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my father giveth ye the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then say they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Evermore give us this bread. So, and Jesus said, verse 35, I am the bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. <laughs> Amen. So, they are talking about the bread, the manna that was falling from heaven. And they say, our fathers ate of the bread from heaven. But Jesus says, the only bread that comes from heaven is he, is him. For the bread of God is he which, verse 33, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. That is the only bread. Say, no other bread came from heaven. The bread that comes from heaven is he, who gives life, who come in, uh, the one who gives life. Amen. So, Jesus is known as the bread of life. And then we looked at him describing himself as the light of the world. This we read from the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 12.
It says, Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. So he that follows Jesus will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. And so we looked at him again as the, the door. Jesus being the door. We, uh, we can read from the book of John chapter 10, verse 7 through 10. John chapter 10, verse 7 through 10. It says, Then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So, he says he is the door. And whoever comes through this door shall have life. Just see uh, verse 10, verse 9. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. I shall go in and out and find pasture. He is the door. So when you come through this door, you will go in and you'll go out and you'll find pastures through this door. Let us get a different understanding of this verse. How do we understand this verse? that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. But Albert, help us understand this. Heaven, give Brother Albert the microphone, please. The water. The water, the bread, they all they're all the symbols of Jesus Christ hmm. being the spiritual head that is going to give us our spiritual being uh, where our eyes open to who he is and to what life is really about hmm. I mean we were born into sin and we're born blind so Jesus came and it's been the symbols since, you know, uh, the Old Testament that Jesus was the water and, and Jesus was the bread and, 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 and Jesus is the door and only through him that we are able to have a spiritual life that our eyes and our ears may be open to uh, 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 who he is hmm. as God and the Savior and the need of a Savior and uh, 
Amen. The way it was intended to be from the beginning. Amen. 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 Lovely. Take care of that microphone, please. Take it round. Yeah, so let's hear from someone else. How do we understand this script, this verse is John chapter 10, verse 7 through, uh, through 10. Amen. <laughs> wow. So, he says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. If you enter through this door, you shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. You are assured of finding pasture through this door. You go in and out through this door and you find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, verse 11. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is unhiring and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. So, Jesus gave his life. He says a good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He lays his life down for the sheep. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus gave his life. He laid his life down. He took our fall. He took our transgressions. He took our iniquity. All our transgressions were laid upon him because he loves the sheep. He took the place of the sheep. Remember in the whole Old Testament, the sheep was the one taking, <laughs> was the one suffering for the sins of the human being. But this time, Jesus gives himself because he's a good shepherd. He's giving himself for the sheep. For us. And so, that's why he is called a good shepherd. Um, verse 14. I am the good shepherd. Uh, uh, I'm the good shepherd and no and I know my sheep, and I am known of mine. And as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Again. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. <laughs> then also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. Therefore, that my father love me, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. 
No man taketh it from me, verse 18, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Amen. The sheep knows the shepherd, and the shepherd knows the sheep too. And he says, I am known of mine. Those who are his, they know him. They have a revelation of him. Because the father reveals it to them. Remember when Jesus asked his disciples, what do people say I am? And when Peter answered the, correctly, he says, oh, okay. It's not you. It's not your own knowledge that has revealed this to you. But the Father who is in heaven. So, those who belongs to the, this good shepherd, they know him. And they can tell who he is. And he says, oh, verse 16, let's look at verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall bear my, they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Let's talk about this verse 16. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. The sheep that, this other sheep, it doesn't belong to this flock. But he says he's not going to cast it away. He has to bring it. He has to bring it on board. To make sure that it, it, it hears his voice. And, uh, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. <laughs> Jesus, this is Jesus. But he's saying, in this flock of the sheep, there are other sheep that don't belong to this flock. But he's not calling, going to cast them away. He has to bring them on board together with this other flock. So that they may hear his voice and become of one flock. So that they will be one flock and one shepherd. So Jesus is bringing them together so that other, this other flock will not lack a shepherd. He wants to be a shepherd to all the sheep. Even if they don't know him, he wants to bring them on board and train them to make sure that they understand, they can hear his voice and train them to be, be to belong into the flock. Elder Macri, help us to understand this. Where's the microphone? Sorry, sorry, Elder Macri. Where's that microphone that we had here? Lovely.
sorry. Amen. Yeah, the flock, the ship and the flock. The ship and the flock. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Jesus was um, uh, telling the Jews that he is sent to the house of Israel. And of course, uh, we, the Gentiles, okay, we are, we are the other the other ship, the mm -hmm. other flock, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So, um, as Jesus now, now when he died and went to heaven, right? Of course, when Jesus was on earth, he, 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 he was preaching to everybody. But the Gentiles were regarded as, as the those who belonged mm -hmm. to the fold. It's only the Israelites that... Um, that uh, people believed he was sent to. So along the line, he had to also preach to the Gentiles. Those that believed when he, he, he paid the sacrifice. The sacrifice is for the whole world. It's for everybody. So the Gentiles also, we also become beneficial of that sacrifice. So I believe that what the Lord is saying there refer to Gentiles who had have now been brought to the Christian fold. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Brother Albert. I'd like to add a little bit to that. Jesus had a plan. God had a plan. His plan was to call the Israelites the least of the people. As he called them the Jews I call them, they got big-headed. They thought they were it. They thought they were the only ones that God had, was going to speak to and that God was going to bless. Yes, those were God's chosen people. However, in, uh, in Romans chapter 11, it speaks very clearly how they rejected the plan of God. And God used that to draw in another people. And they didn't understand when God came that he was calling the other people, which were the Gentiles, that were going not to reject the plan of salvation, but to receive it and also to spread it. Mm. So they were grafted into his plan of salvation. Amen. And we and the rest of the world, other than the Jews, are the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus is coming for the, for the Jews. But even from, the, from his coming, they did not believe it. They even didn't want to hear about him saying that he's the one who has come. But Jesus still calls, him his, who calls them his own. But they were not hearing his voice. They did not know him. So, us being the Gentiles, being grafted into the plan of salvation. So, who are these true sheep? This true flock that Jesus already has. <laughs> and this other sheep that he has to bring on board. Because the Jews, did, they really, in fact, that is why they wanted Jesus to, be, to, to die as soon as possible because they didn't want to hear him say talk anything about him being uh, coming from heaven uh, being in the in god's plans of, of god's plan of redemption pastor Barry, help us understand that praise the lord you know there's a there's one thing that we always don't look into uh when we think about the Pharisees, many times we, we usually, you know, we usually um, 
not necessarily ignore them, but we always say, you know, the Pharisees, they knew the law and they were so much indoctrinated in the law and yet they could not understand the mission of Christ. But remember, the Pharisees were so much about doing good. But this doing good, they didn't know that, or they didn't believe that the mission of Jesus Christ was to enhance the good which they knew, but now not by law. It was supposed to be now by grace. So the Pharisees were not evil people. They were not sinners. These were people who were so much, they undertook the law and they were so much into the law that if it was on a worship day or a day of rest, they could not even move an inch. So for them, they thought holiness was by the acts of men. So they wanted to do good. And Jesus said, some of them, they might be with us, yes, but they haven't understood the mission, the purpose of salvation. They haven't understood it yet. And although they are part of the fold, but they are not, they haven't understood. So when he says that they are not of the fold, they haven't understood the mission of Jesus Christ. But remember, they were all fighting to protect the laws of Moses. Do not sin, do not commit adultery, do not steal, you know, an eye for an eye. So if you do, if you sin, you need to be punished, no forgiveness. So they were so much into, you know, they were what we call holier than thou. They didn't believe that there's another way somebody else would come and uh, in the name of the Son of God to save us. So he says they are here, yes, they are with us in this fold, in this fold. But they are not of this fault until they now open their hearts, believe, and then confess. The Pharisees had not confessed. They, they had not believed. They had, they had not confessed. So they had not confessed by their mouth, but they knew that the law was there. So they all fought to observe this law. So you might be in the fold, and yet your heart is hardened not to believe in the power of salvation. There are people who are in the church even today. I mean, in the churches out there even today. But they don't believe in the power of salvation. They don't believe in, the, in, in, in baptism. They don't believe in, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. But they're in church. And they, if you even speak in tongues, they'll tell you, hey, shut up, we don't do that here. If you try to talk about baptism, they begin asking you questions. So baptism by who? By the name of Jesus by the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they forget, even Isaiah said, his name shall be called Everlasting Father. So they are, uh, what Paul says, beware of those who are among you to cause confusion. Because they cause confusion. They are in the fold, yes. But because of uh, not believing in the power of salvation and the mission of Jesus Christ, then they still have to be brought. Jesus says, but I will still do what? Bring them. I will still bring them to the fold mm -hmm. so that we may become one fold. And then he says in verse 17, and that is why my father loves me. So why does his father love him? He loves him because he will bring them. He will give them an opportunity. So it, is not, it goes beyond just looking at them as Pharisees, but reaching out to them. It goes beyond just looking at those who have confessed, uh, who, who, have who have heard the word and even not uh, uh, confessed. We need to reach out to them and bring them to the fold. And Jesus says, that is why our Father loves us. So by reaching out, you uh, confirm the love of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Albert wants to say something. <laughs> I would like to add to that too. The word of God says that the veil remained over the Jews' eyes. Isaiah said that having eyes that they shall not see and having ears that they may not hear. In Acts, I believe it was 28, Paul says that the saying is true, that the Jews that having eyes that they may not see and ears that they may not hear, that they may not repent. Why? Because they rejected the plan of God. However, the word of God tells the Gentiles that have received God that do not forget the chosen because they will enter back into the plan of God. Amen. 
Amen. And I, I was just God, I was just listening to someone who was talking about the love. The love amongst the believers. And he was asking, where has this love gone to? Because as being having been the Gentiles who were by grace or by the extension of the hand of Christ that we were accepted into the family of God. But we get to the point now, we become like the Pharisees. We become, but we feel like we are, we were the ones that we received the salvation first and we qualify to judge others. And this, this brother was asking, if your fellow brother or if your fellow, you are the servants of God and your fellow servant of God is dead and you refuse to attend the funeral because you judge this person as an evil person but the same gospel that you have been preaching is the same gospel that he has been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ reaching out to the lost reaching out to help for help helping the needy preaching the gospel to them but you are able, you are very comfortable to go to the funeral of that politician who never knew Christ. In fact, who rejected Christ. But now he's dead, you are there, you are there to tell of the good things that this politician did. But your fellow brother, your fellow servant of God, that you preach the same gospel is dead. And you refuse to attend the, the funeral. And you tell your congregation not to, to stop there. So, are we in the same flock? This was the will of, of God through Jesus Christ. That there may be one shepherd and one flock. And Jesus, in his prayer before he went... He prayed. He said, Lord, my prayer is that they may be one. As I and you are one. So Jesus puts the flock together. And even prayed that they may remain in oneness. But what has happened? The self-righteousness that we are imposing on ourselves. That we don't remember what the mission of Jesus was to put the flock together and to have one shepherd. To have one flock and one. And so we are tearing the flock apart. Even in the days of, of, of Paul. They say, some say, we belong to Apollos. Some say, oh, I belong to Paul. Some say, ask, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are just servants of God. We don't have to choose. We don't have to say, oh, this one is walking in sin. Don't walk with them. Oh, this one is preaching Christ, but uh, I, I, you know, when I look at the, his doctrines, it's not, it's not really for Christ. When people came to, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, we saw other people driving demons away in your name. And Jesus said, so long as they are not against us. <laughs> so who are we? That we are dividing the flock. And saying, oh. That one, no. You should not follow. You should not listen to that one. He's not a true servant of God. Who has that gauge to measure the true servants? The true children of God, if it's if not God Himself, if not Christ Himself, and that's why we are not allowed to judge, we only have one judge who 
has been given power to judge? Who is Jesus Christ? And so, if we start now becoming like the sheep, the other sheep that doesn't belong to the flock, so who do we belong to? If we don't want to associate ourselves, if I don't want to associate, it's only Jesus Christ that brings us together from different nations. I can call Brother Albert my brother because of Jesus Christ. He has brought us together from different nations. But if by the same Jesus Christ we want to put like, how, what percentage is he, is he preaching about Jesus Christ? What percentage is, how, which percentage did Jesus give us that we may preach him? We don't have, we don't have the gate to measure. Which percentage are you using the name of Jesus Christ for? And so, if we want Jesus, if Jesus' mission was that we, he, we, there may be one shepherd and there may be one flock. And so if we say we are perfect, we don't want to mix with others. And the Bible says if we say we have no sin, we will be lying. And we will be crucifying Jesus for the second time. And so I was asking my husband, so are we, is it that now that the, 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 the Pentecostal is forgetting where it's supposed to be and is taking the place of the Pharisees, pointing fingers, judging? And so, do they want again Jesus to come and die for the second time again? Which is, which is not possible. Before we close, Brother Albert, I, I saw your hand. And then we leave past it. Use the microphone, please. Oh, thank you. First of all, I love what you're saying because we need to be very careful that we don't become like the scribes. There were three groups of the Jews. There were the scribes, which were the writers of the law. There were the Pharisees that were the keepers of the law. And they were the Sadducees. I call them the Sadducees because they didn't believe in the angels or in the spirit of God. Now, these three were separate. And this is what Jesus didn't want. The, the, the scribes, they wrote the law but did not understand the law. The Pharisees, they just wanted to be legalistic and keep the law. Mm. The, the Sadducees wanted to separate. Amen. Pastor, our time is up. The very <laughs> uh, interesting uh, discussion today, but more importantly, we need to recognize that um, Jesus came as an embodiment of love. Mm. And um, love covers the multitude of sin. No matter how much different we may be in color, in doctrine, in uh, belief, as long as we all proclaim Jesus as our Lord and Savior, love should be the binding force together. Amen. And I pray that that will be the, the body of Christ will continue to have a better understanding of that. Mm. Because he said, until we all come to the fullness of, of Christ and become one body. And the only thing that can bind together is 
looking at what what we have in common, not what divides us. And I pray that God will help us. Jesus is the way, the door. And when we all focus on him, then we can all be bounded together. Regardless of difference in doctrines, God has not called us to be led by doctrines, but to be to be led by one shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Our doctrines may be different, but our God, Lord Jesus, has given us just one way, which is Jesus. And as we rally around and follow him, then we will be able to be more understanding of others, more tolerant of others, and we will be able to live together in one peace and in one accord. Amen. May God help us and give us grace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just uh, ask God for, because this also happens amongst, not only with the big time uh, men of God, pastors, even amongst us. We see somebody different and we look at such people, uh, oh, this one is going to hell. So we avoid them. Let's ask for grace to be more tolerant, to love and to be kind to one another, to serve one another in that spirit of love. Let's ask God to, to, to give us that spirit of oneness, unity, that we will, be, we will not be moved by the things we see but we will be moved by the sacrifice that Jesus made for everyone. Father, Lord, we thank you. We receive grace and we receive better understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Receive all the glory, honor, and adoration for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to um, ask a quick question that we can think of next week. Somebody asked this question, and I still have not found the answer. The person um, didn't. I think I found the answer for part one, but the other part we we couldn't. And the person too did not answer. It's in John fourteen six. Jesus said unto him, "Since we are we are still treating John." Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the person asked, how is Jesus the way, the truth, and the life? I want us to think about it next week. Thank you, sir. If that is what today's uh, Bible study is actually about, but we digress into if another very important area. So, I'm sure the teacher will continue next week in that in that this same topic. How is it the way? How is, is it the, the truth? How is being the light? I believe next next Sunday we can continue. Praise God. Thank you.